Hi, welcome to Tag Arcade. And in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to modify the standalone input module um, so that we could use our customized configuration instead of the default ones. Uh, so what I did is I looked around the internet to try to find the standalone input module code. And to some great success, I actually did find it. So I went ahead and took that code and I copied it into my project and I modified it. So I just copied it to my asset folder and let's go ahead and wait and here's my Tag Arcade event system. So when you first import it, you're going to get a lot of errors, but that's okay. So we're going to open up the Tag Arcade event system and see what's in there. Okay, so it looks like the code opened up on my other screen, so I'm going to go ahead and grab that. Okay, so here is my Tag Arcade event system. Uh, so within the Tag Arcade event system, we have something called the input actions per second. That's just how many readings you get from the joystick button uh, in one second. So like if you press and hold it down, and this is set to 10, it's going to read that joystick button press 10 times. If you set it to 100, it's going to read that button press 100 times in that one second. Then we get the repeat delay. And it's just exactly that. If you hold down the button, how often is that button going to be detected in your game? So if you set the repeat delay to like say two seconds, you hold it down, and it's going to detect it being pressed every two seconds. So if you're like in a space shooter and you're a ship firing a bullet, it's going to fire a bullet every two seconds as long as that button is being held down. So that's going to be the repeat delay. Um, and we have the activate module and what that does is it's the same thing as the start function in Unity but within the I guess the standalone input module it's going to be called activate module so then we have the process function the process function is actually practically the same as your update loop so anything that constantly has to be done here is going to be done in the process loop. So we have this that says send update, okay, send move event to selected objects. So what that does is that simply detects the um, arrow keys. So like your up, down, left, and right movements. So that's what this function does. Then we have the send submit events to selected objects. So what that function does is if you press a button, whether it's the submit button, the cancel button, or whatever button you have in your game, that's what the second one does. So if it doesn't read a button press as like an up, down, left, or right movement, then you must have pressed some other button like your submit, cancel, or whatever you're doing in your game. Then you have the second part where first it's going to try to read the touch events. So if it reads the touch events, great. And if not, then you probably press the mouse instead. So that's what the second thing does, process mouse events. And I went ahead and added this to the code as well. Uh, what this does is moves the focus from one object to another. And you're going to see it, a practical usage uh, later on in, in the tutorial. And that's it. So like I said, I took the standalone input module and I stripped away everything I didn't need. So the only thing that I really used, so the only thing I really kept was the mouse presses and the arrow keys, like being able to move up, down, left, and right. So let's go ahead and look at our code to see what's wrong with our code. So our code doesn't have this definition for submit and cancel. So let's go ahead and go back into our controls and add that in. So I'm going to say copy. I mean, not copy. A comma, submit, cancel. If I could spell cancel. There we go. Hit save and that should get rid of those error messages. Okay. Uh, 
so the next thing I want to do is I want to take my event system and I'm going to drag in my tag arcade event system and I'm just going to deselect my standalone input module it turns out you can't actually have two standalone input modules if you try to enable both of them it's only going to take the first one so you have to sort of either disable the standalone input module or simply delete it um, but yeah okay so let's go ahead and hit run and we have some error messages that my array is out of index so let's see what ex exactly which arrays are out of index so since I added more things to my array uh, my button presses I gotta make sure I got a cat I account for those so controls is button on okay so it looks like in my control section I only stopped at NAS. I didn't allocate the memory spaces for my other two events, the submit and cancel. So let's go ahead and change that to seven. Oops. And let's try it again. Let's go ahead and change that to seven. Hit enter. And we're going to change this to submit. And the last one to cancel. Okay. Close that. And save this. Well, huh? save. Play. So now my error message went away. And if I press a button, let's say up, press down, left, right. Now, after I've changed those keys, my, WS, my WSAD keys will move my selection up, down, left, and right. So to download my Tag Arcade event system, please look into the description, and there will be a link to my website so that you can download the code. So download the code, import, import it into your game, and have fun. And that is the end of this tutorial. Um, in the next tutorial, I'm going to show you how to modify this so that we could add a submit and cancel button within this uh, GUI interface. If you like what you hear, subscribe and all that good stuff. And until next time, have fun and keep on coding.